All right, now we're getting all the way around the hexagon to side six. So all those modules we just went through were all about side five, which is the whole mastery, learning how to learn, continuous improvement kind of stuff from a, from a personal viewpoint. And now we have to address the issue of how do we all become not just adults, but sort of partners in the business together. Um, when you look at most businesses, there is a hierarchy. There's a, a king at the top, and they've got some key lieutenants, and on down to the to the 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 buck the the the, the you know the, the the buck privates at the bottom, or maybe you might think in terms of of, of bosses and serfs, or tops, and then there's sort of bureaucratic political guys in the middle who uh, who are called bureaucratic or middles, and the guys at the bottom, and they they tend to be united solidarity against the tops who make all the money or was what they think anyway. Sometimes there's a a beneficent family paternalistic uh, spin to it, which is it's comforting in the sense that the family says, well, look, um, you know, our first priority is sort of taking care of our children, you know, and, and if, uh, if we have to make less money to sort of protect people and their jobs and so forth, that's good. So that, that gives you a sense of, uh, of security, I suppose, but still it's, it's, it's infantilizing kids and it's not about, hey, how do we work together to create wealth for all stakeholders, which is a much more exciting agenda than let's just not, uh, you know, kill the goose and, and, and try to ration the poverty that's coming out of it. To sort of, uh, entrench this power system that's going on. You see these status perks. Uh, so there's there designated parking spots, special dining rooms, and so forth. Uh, we also see informational obeisance. Uh, so we obey whoever is the loudest, highest paid guy in the, in the, in the room and their gut opinion without line item, line item profit analytics reality uh, is, is what, what carries the day, whether we agree with it or not. Uh, so we sort of have emperors running around without any clothes and suck-ups telling them they look great and they're wonderful and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the flip side of that coin is if I come in and say, hey, boss, there's bad news, and they get angry at me, well, then I'm not going to tell them any bad news. I'm not going to tell them that I made a good mistake. I'm just going to say I didn't try anything, and I'm not going to try anything. So when we see this kind of a hierarchy, which I guess had its place in the Middle Ages, and, of course, if as long as you can... Uh, exploit the serfs and have an army to protect you, it's probably a good gig. Um, but uh, certainly it doesn't work in today's business world. So how do we name these practices that may be going on and say it's okay? It's just part of human nature, you know. Uh, that's the way most societies are organized. And then how do we sort of diffuse them so we can get on with, you know, stop being children and become adults and, and partners in the business? Now, remember, it takes two people to play this game. Now, if I went into a company and somebody started treating me like a kid or whatever, you know, I'd call them on it. And if, if they didn't like that, I'd go find a new job. I mean, that's just who I am. Um, but uh, a lot of people are like, ooh, no, I, I, I don't have the confidence to go and find another job or uh, get there early and stay late and do whatever I have to to become a high performer or whatever. Um, so what we do is we tend to drive away uh, our most talented, ambitious, you know, people, or certainly even attract them to our business to begin with. Um, for example, today's kids that are getting out of, out of out of college are notably they don't like taking orders. They just they don't want to do that. And there are plenty of industries, that are old industries, in most distribution channels are hundred year old models, and they are loaded with traditional old time thinking and hierarchies and so forth. And this is an anathema to kids going to school. They don't, they don't want to go work for those kinds of industries and those kinds of companies. So if you have a, an aging population at your, at your company and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do about it? This is, this is one of the aspects of the hexagon we've got to give some careful thought to. Um, so it takes two to play this game. Um, and we also, it, 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 it can be played without informational transparency. So if honchos know all the inside scoop and, and, the, and the serfs don't, then, then that allows games to be played. But if everybody's sharing the same information, we've got the same goal, we're in the same boat, we get paid the same gain sharing bonus way, it makes for a di very different communication and cooperation kind of environment. I think one of the key things is, is that if we, put all the numbers involved in the hexagon out there and we tell everybody that 
feels that they have to be an expert, that they don't have to be an expert anymore. They don't have to know the answer to everything, that they can be just co-learners. The key is to ask good questions and say, let's push the wheel of learning. Let's try cheap, cheap experiments. We'll figure our way up to the vision peak uh, as we blaze our own trail. You know, it, it'll, it'll all work out. So these things will melt away. So in the next few slides, I'm going to do some variations on how do we turn serfs or children into partners or adults. Thank you.